I'm going to talk to you about the biggest surah of the Qur'an. That's what I'm going to talk to you about first. The biggest surah of the Qur'an. Now what is it folks? Yeah, this is surah number two. Surah number two. This surah, this biggest surah, number two, is made up of how many ayahs? 286. 286 ayahs. Somewhere in this surah, the ayah occurs, the, I'll recite the Arabic first, and roughly translate after, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَى Thus we made you a middle nation. One of the utterances in this surah, that's found in here, is thus we made you a middle nation. Now what's the Arabic word for middle? Wasat. Wasat. The Arabic word is wasat, you don't have to know that. But know that this statement, this declaration occurs in this surah. This surah, was it written? Or was it delivered in the form of speech? speech. And also, as a historical comment, it wasn't delivered at once. It took almost 10 years to be revealed. So this, this one surah was coming piecemeal. And while it was coming down, pieces of other surahs were also being revealed. And the messenger would instruct his companions, these ayahs belong to this surah, and those ayahs belong to that surah. But when the whole thing is said and done, Baqarah, the second surah, is made up of 286 and in ayah number listen to this carefully now in ayah number 143 in ayah number 143 the Lord says we made you a middle nation how many ayahs in this surah again? 286 and where does he call us a middle nation? in the middle in the middle now how do you I understand if you're gonna do this in writing I understand if you're going to do this in writing. How do you do this in speech? And by the way, at the time, there was no concept of ayah number. Like I told you, ayahs, there are 286 ayahs, and there's 143 ayahs. At the time, they never said, haven't you read ayah 12 of chapter 35? They didn't talk like that. They just recited the ayah. They didn't have this number scheme. When did this number scheme become part of the Qur'an? When the Qur'an was finally put into book form, but the generation we're talking about doesn't have a book before them. They don't have that before them. They're, they're memorizing this, and it's completely and entirely an oral tradition. So that's one small example. So, brothers and sisters, those of you who know about the earth will know that the center of the earth, right in the middle, that little ball, it is made up of iron. Now, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they did not have the technology and the means to know about what the center of the earth is made up of, and it wasn't really relevant to them. But Alhamdulillah, using modern day technology, we come to find out that the center of the earth is made up of iron. You may be thinking now, what's the miracle in this? The Quran, all of us as Muslims, we should know that it has 114 chapters. Now what's half of 114? 57. So that's right in the middle, that's right in the center of the Qur'an. The 57th chapter. What is it called? Al-Hadid. Iron. Subhanallah. This is a miracle in the Qur'an that some of us didn't know about. And this just goes to show you how precise the Qur'an is in its miracles. Look at this ayah. لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون. Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks of all heavenly bodies. Each of them in their own assigned space, they are floating, swimming, rotating. What's he speaking about? Bodies in space, planets, stars, right? Galaxies. He's speaking about all of them doing what? Rotating. Spell out the first words, Kullun fi falak. What's the first letter in Kullun fi falak? What's the last letter? What's the first letter? What's the second, last, and second? What's the third, last, and third? You notice something? What are they rotating around? What, what, what letter are they rotating around? The word he used for rotating, yasbahoon, yeah. Subhanallah. <laughs> how do you do that? How do, how do human beings come up with that? Allah Azza wa Jalla speaks, and this is not written form. This is not written word. This is spoken word. 
Allah Azza wa gave this Qur'an to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so he would recite it unto the people. So he would recite it as a word. We are baffled even the way it's spelled. Even the way it's written. But it was baffling, mind-boggling, stunning. Really stunning in its perfected form. In the Tafsir Ibn Abbas of Surah Al-Qadr, there is this very interesting observation reported by the cousin of the Prophet Abdullah Ibn Abbas What he mentions, and we can very well assume that this was the very first numerical miracle understood inside the Quranic Ayat, the very first one. And SubhanAllah, this gives us an insight of that time of the Sahaba that even the companions like Abdullah Ibn Abbas Anhuma, the cousin of the Prophet himself was going so deep inside the Quran as far as even counting the number of words inside the surah as we will see right now that what Ibn Abbas says about the surah so let us have this analysis of Surah Al-Qadr that is surah number 96 as directed by Ibn Abbas himself the cousin of the Prophet so Ibn Abbas anhu holds this position that in his opinion Laylatul Qadr is on the 27th night of Ramadan. Now, of course, the scholars do not take it as a Sharia. Of course, Laylatul Qadr is as the Prophet himself said that it is on the 21st night or 23rd night or 25th night or 27th night or 29th night. The odd nights among the last 10 nights of the Ramadan. But Ibn Abbas who had this position that Laylatul Qadr lies in the 27th night of the Ramadan. And why does he say so? How does he come to this conclusion? He says, now listen carefully, read this surah, Suratul Qadr. Basically, the surah whose complete theme is Laylatul Qadr. He says, count the number of words in this surah. And if you do, you will see that Inna is one word, Anzalnahu is the second word, Fi the third word, and Laylatu is the fourth word, Al Qadr is the fifth word. So, five words in the first ayah. Similarly, five more words in the second ayah. Wama adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. And then six words in the third ayah, then nine words in the fourth ayah, and five words in the fifth ayah. Count this yourself. And how many total words are there? Exactly 30 words. So exactly 30 words are there in this chapter number 96, Surah Al-Qadr of Quran. So Ibn Abbas who points out. And it's interesting that in Tafsir ibn Abbas, he mentions that he was pointing this out to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was holding the position that Laylatul Qadr is on the 23rd night of Ramadan. So there is a discussion going on between Ibn Abbas and Umar. Ibn Abbas is saying 27th night and Umar is saying 23rd night. So there are 30 words in Suratul Qadr. And guess what is the exact 27th word in the surah? So there are 30 words and what is the exact 27th word in the surah? Lo and behold it says hiya and what does hiya mean? Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr Peace it is until the emergence of fajr Hiya means it and what is it in the surah? It's Laylatul Qadr So Laylatul Qadr is peace until the emergence of fajr So there are 30 words in the surah and the exact 27th word is it which means Laylatul Qadr so based on this, Abdullah ibn Abbas who says the 30 words of Surah Al-Qadr are the 30 days of Ramadan and the 27th word is Laylatul Qadr. Subhanallah. And then Ibn Abbas who backs up his opinion by quoting another numerical miracle from this same Surah. So there are two, two miracles, not just one. He said, also, how many letters are there in the phrase Laylatul Qadr? So, Laylatul Qadr, obviously he was talking about the Arabic letters, not the English letters. We won't count L-A-Y-L-A-T-U-L. We won't count in English. We will count the Arabic letters. So, there is Layla is four letters, Lam, Ya, then Lam and Tamarbut. And then Al Qadr is five letters, Alif Lam, Qaf, Dal and Ra. So, there are a total of nine letters in the phrase Laylatul Qadr. Total nine alphabets. And... This phrase Laylatul Qadr is repeated thrice in this surah. Inna anzallahu fi Laylatul Qadr wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayru min al fishar three times. So nine letters, nine alphabets used thrice. It makes up nine into three, twenty-seven. 
9 multiplied by 3 is 27. So a total of 27 letters, alphabets, are there which refer to Laylatul Qadr in the surah. This book uses the word ad dunya. You know what ad dunya means? This world. This book uses the word this world 115 times. 115 times. What word is used? Ad dunya. Did anybody know that back then? They had no idea. This book also uses al akhirah. This life, ad dunya, al akhirah, the next life. It uses it 115 times. This book uses the word angels 88 times. Malaika, 88 times. It uses the word devils, shayateen, 88 times. The word life occurs 145 times in the entire Qur'an. Al-Hayat, life. You want to take a guess what else comes in the Qur'an 145 times? Death. Death, the word death occurs in the Qur'an 145 times. The word good deeds, good deeds are mentioned 167 times. As-Salihat, and a sayyad, bad deeds, 167 times. The word disbelief is mentioned 17 times. Belief is mentioned 17 times. Iblis is mentioned by name 11 times. Seeking refuge from Iblis is mentioned 11 times. They said, the phrase they said occurs 332 times. And the Quran says, say 332 times. How is it possible that in, in like 23 years of revelation, he uses the word month only 12 times? Yeah. Days actually only used 365 times. There's just a few. Just word counts. Is that humanly possible? We just think about that. Is that humanly possible? Somebody speaks for 23 years, doesn't write any of it down, and these words seem to line up perfectly. The Quran mentions Jesus 25 times. The Quran mentions Isa 25 times. The Quran mentions Adam 25 times. Over the course of 23 years and the 600 pages of revelation that we have, the example of Jesus as far as God's concerned is just like the example of Adam. Isn't that what he said? The example of Isa is just like the example of Adam. The two prophets that have been mentioned the same number of times, 25 each, are who? Isa and Adam. And then what's even crazier is this is in the third surah. This is in the third surah. How many times did I say it's been mentioned? 25 times. If you go before this surah, before the third surah, before Ali Imran, you have, you have uh, Fatiha, and then you have Baqarah, and then you have some parts of Ali Imran, and then you have this ayah. Up until this point, Isa has been mentioned six times. This is the seventh time. This is the seventh time that his name has come up. And if you go from the beginning up until this point, this is also the seventh time Adam is mentioned. And if you go from here to the rest of the Qur'an, both of them are going to be mentioned 18 times each. The example of Isa as far as Allah is concerned, no doubt, is just like the example of Adam. Miracle in Surat Al-Kahf When describing the story of the people of the cave, Allah says that the people remained in their cave for 300 years and exceeded by 9. But what does that actually mean? 300 or 300 plus 9? We'll check this out. If we take 300 solar years with 309 lunar years, we are left with almost the exact amount of time. mind blown but there's still more what's interesting to note is the word used for remained labithu if we count how many words from the first instance of where allah says labithu to the last instance where he states labithu there are exactly 309 words not only that but the word 300 occurs at the 300th number. Mind blown. 
Now, was the Prophet peace be upon him busy on his calculator 1400 years ago trying to work this all out at a time where calculators didn't even exist? Or is this book really divine? The choice is yours. Read. I would like to give you the meaning of land and sea. Land is repeated 13 times, whereas the word sea repeated 32 times. Well, at first sight, it doesn't seem to be very meaningful. However, if you do a simple math, you're going to have 13. If you add 32, you're going to have 45 as for the result. And the percentages, if you divide 13 to 45, you're going to have 28,88%. And 32 to 45, as for the word C, you're going to have 71,11%. Now, do you have any idea what those percentages represent? Well, I'll tell you, those numbers will give you the, all the lands all over the world on the earth occupies 28,88% of the whole earth. And all the seas, oceans, rivers, all the water occupies... 71,11% of the whole earth. Now again, these repetition numbers are very meaningful and it clearly represents us and gives us good scientific evidences that the Holy Quran is word of Allah. And it cannot be, definitely can't be a scripture of a man. This is not possible. There are certain features of the Quran that measure up to 19 or times 19. In the 74th chapter of the Quran, in the 30th verse, the number 19 is mentioned, and this is said to be the number of angels guarding hell. But then in the very following verse, the 31st verse of that chapter, it, it details why this number was mentioned. And it says that this will give the people of the book certainty, and it will increase the faith of the believers. While at the same time, those who have diseases in their hearts and those who disbelieve will be deriding this information. So there are two responses. One is that it can give us certainty and increase our faith. Or somebody might say, oh, that's nothing. Now it's up to you how you're going to respond to this information. But here is what we find. That verse that details the wisdom of the number 19 comprises 19 times 3 words or 57 words. The words in that chapter prior to this verse are 95 words, or 19 times 5. If we count the words within the first 19 verses of that chapter, they're 19 times 3, or 57 words. If we count the letters coming all the way down to just before, but not including the mention of the number 19, they are 361 letters, which is 19 squared, or 19 times 19. Did all of these 19s occur by coincidence near the mention of the number 19? Okay, let's go to uh, Surah 96. Surah 96, the first five verses were said to be the ones first revealed to the Prophet Muhammad on whom be peace as he meditated in the cave. Regardless of whether this is the first or not, examine these first five verses. They're made up of 19 words. Count the letters. There are 76 letters, which is 19 times 4. Okay, count the letters in the entire chapter. There are 19 times 15 words or 200 letters or 285 letters in that uh, chapter. The number 285 occurs elsewhere again, repeatedly in the Quran. For example, the 72nd uh, chapter of the Quran has 285 words. And it's interesting that this chapter ends by saying that God has taken into account everything numerically. And the last word is numerically. Now, if we check the last word of every verse in this Quran, and we add up all of the letters, we find that there are 114 letters that make up these last words of every verse. And 114 is 19 times 6, which is also the number of chapters, as you recall, Jay said, of the entire Quran, 114. So how did all of these 19s occur? By mere coincidence, or is this by a divine plan? The Quran, as Jay said, comprises 114 chapters. Each chapter has a number of verses, and there are two numbers that are thus associated with each chapter. The chapter number, from 1 to 114, and the number of verses within the chapter. 
Now, there is a mathematical relationship between these two numbers. If you add the two numbers together, you either get an even number result or an odd number result. That, that's elementary. You add two numbers together, you either get an even number result or an odd number result. Uh, result. If you do this for the entire Quran, you obviously have 114 results. And some of them are going to be even numbers, some of them are going to be odd numbers. If you did this yourself, you will see to your surprise that exactly half of the results are even numbers and half of them are odd numbers. 57 even numbers, 57 odd numbers. What created this fine balance? Now let's go deeper. Take the 57 even number results and add them all together. You get the grand total of 6,236. Even though this total emerged from only 57 chapters of the Quran, this number, 6,236, is also the number of verses in the entire Quran. So how did that emerge from only 57 chapters? Now, let's look at the odd number results and add them all together. The sum of those 57 odd number results is 6,555. And it turns out that that number is the grand total of all of the chapter numbers of the entire Quran, the entire 114 chapter numbers. How did this fine balance occur? So that not only do we have an even number of even and odd results, but the even results total the, the number of verses of the entire Quran, and the odd number results is the total of all of the chapter numbers of the Quran. Now, one step further. If you did this yourself in, let's say, a computer worksheet program, you entered all of the numbers, now you have the results, so you see the numbers matching at the bottom in your totals, you will see that if you put in one verse extra anywhere, or you take out one verse by changing the numbers, just make one number bigger by one or smaller by one, or you change any of the chapters, add a chapter, take away a chapter, the entire system then collapses. And what this means for me is that, to begin with, the system is there in place by God himself. And secondly, this shows that the Quran, the one that I'm referring to, has been preserved and handed down to us over time so we can be assured that this is the word of God.